This week on CrossFeed. Muslim Jesus. A heated debate over the Quran. Highest pulpit ever. The Bible in 140 characters. And Bible and pastor arrested for casting out demons. Hello, everybody, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. And I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in Dedham, Massachusetts, welcoming you all to this episode of Truth is Stranger Than Fiction yeah, episode okay. hey, of this is, uh, CrossFeed. Yeah, yeah, that or This is episode, pastors. what, 275? Really? It's something 75. Uh, it's got to be 275. Okay, yeah. So, woohoo. So, so we got six more months till 300. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot, a lot of strange stuff. Hey, folks, Dale had a cool weekend. He's got to tell you about this. I had a very cool weekend. The ongoing, oh, wait, that's the wrong picture. Here we go. The ongoing ambassadors for Christ uh, came. There's a brand new, that's kind of distracting, isn't it? <laughs> um, there's a brand new Ohio team. Um, Anybody that's familiar with uh, kind of the people in uh, Ongoing Ambassadors for Christ, Ben Triplett is the leader of it. Um, he's a teacher at Ohio or at um, uh, uh, Lutheran East High School in Cleveland. And um, so I had the honor of he stayed at my home along with the other adult leader, uh, Roger. And uh, they this is their the team's first um official weekend and uh so we had the honor of hosting it um we didn't have a huge turnout but you know we were able to do some canvassing and um and we we did something a little different we did uh prayer walking which is the idea i got from jim and uh it's it's different i found out that there's two different kinds of prayer walking um that there's the sort of there's some strange evangelical um, kind of thing that we didn't do. And then, um, then there's the, what we did do. And we just went around and, um, asked people if they, what needs they saw in the community that we should be praying about and, um, and what needs that they had, uh, them or their family. And, um, and then we offered to pray for them. And, and then, uh, after that we gave them, uh, information about the church and, um, and did I, did I mention that we did pray with them? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, so it was really, it was really cool. I'm crazy sore from it. Um, because I'm not used to walking that much. Uh, and, uh, but, oh, we just had such a good time. And, um, and, and we sort of kind of halfway through the weekend ended up, a few people showed up, um, for a couple more youth and, um, and they joined in with, we were done with canvassing, but they joined in with the rest of it, um, going to the nursing home and, um, which was just a really great experience. And, um, and then we were, uh, and then getting ready for the service. And we did the, uh, for almost a, a full blown OEFC service where there's different songs that, uh, that are used as the different components of the service and the kids did just an amazing job of, of, um, of just, you know, we, we practiced stuff first, first run through it when we were practicing, they had it down and, and, uh, which is great cause we didn't start really practicing for the service until like eight thirty last night. And, uh, so we're all pretty exhausted already and, but they're real troopers and, um, everybody just had a great time and the service today was wonderful. Um, I got just, hugely positive feedback on it. Everybody really liked it. And, um, so it was just a really tremendous experience. Um, if, if you have, I know that there's not as many active teams as there used to be, but, um, if you're LCMS and you are in a district that has, uh, an active team and you have not been hosting or you haven't recently hosted, um, the OEFC team, um, go to oefc.org and uh get the uh information there's a listing there of all the different teams mm -hmm. and you can contact them and oh man you're missing out if you haven't hosted an OEFC team 
It's just such a tremendous I used experience. to be on OFC teams. They wouldn't let me sing, but that's beside the point. And uh, they, um, I used to, like to be also on, um, uh, uh, um, and they actually had some here in uh, my church in Dedham. But you're talking about the other kind of prayer walking, where you kind of walk around and you cast out demons and, you know, or pray in this area. Well, let's let's deal with our uh, this pastor down here in Florida. That he, I think he needs, he's probably been doing some prayer walking around his public school. Um <laughs> like we said, I mean, a lot of this stuff is weird pastors this week. You know, there's just, you know, and this guy, this, 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 and a lot of them, a lot of them are from Florida. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, mean, Florida. Three of them, I was like, I like three of them. They're, 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 I don't know, man. They're, they're all weird. Are they all weird pastors in Florida? Um, but uh, this guy, he, uh, name was, um, let's get his name. Um, uh my story's just Something disappeared. Something Crosby. Um, no, got to hold up on. Oh, there it is. Sorry, folks, we're closed for two weeks to clean and repair America's favorite family fun park. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. My no uh, stories are still in the printer. <laughs> oh, that caused a problem. There we go. Yeah, Pastor Donald Crosby. Yeah, so you got, yeah, Pastor Donald Crosby, and he's all upset because um, the, his local high school, where apparently his kids are going to be going to school, their uh, um, mascot are, are the demons. Yep. And um, I like the picture of, from the from the uh, newspaper article better. Uh, it's just it's just kind of a goofy looking picture there, but uh, and uh, he is being protesting protest this, and uh, he says the the school's demon logo, which you see right there, encourages children to evil. Yeah, and he says I'm standing. You know, he says, you know, and he, other Christians are. He says, he criticizes other Christians who he says are singing in church while their children are being taught to praise demons. Demons aren't lazy. Christians are. Pull up the floor. Yeah, and the city of Warner Robins must repent for its demon praising. I think we had a bad influence on her. Oh, I'm sorry. This guy, I guess this guy's in Georgia. I thought he was also in Florida, but apparently he may be in, I think he might be in Georgia. No, Florida so doesn't say, have, oh yeah, um, this is for uh, the Making Georgia um, uh, TV station. Yeah, um, so... I mean, yeah, I just Florida doesn't get have this. a corner on the crazies. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> they're all they're all down south, so um, you know he, he said, you know, he was shocked when he realized his son could be, you know, shouting "Go demons!" <laughs> uh, People like you were the reason I was afraid to go to school as a child. <laughs> ticketed outside the school without a permit, and then he was released on six hundred and fifty dollars bond. Uh, which, by the way, I have a problem with because if he was, you know. Picketing, he's you know doing his First Amendment rights and shouldn't have to have a, a permit for that, but that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Dale, what do you think, bud? Well, I don't know. You, you have I, okay. I've I've never been a fan of you know demons or or stuff like that as a um, as a mascot. Like I, I don't let my kids dress up as devils for um, for Halloween. Um, Dale won't even buy a Red Devil vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, we have one of those. Dirt Devil. <laughs> so, but, you know, I mean, I, I do think that if if the, that there are probably other things in the school that are encouraging them to sin more so than a, um, a goofy mascot. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. So, um, I mean, I mean, to me, the scariest book I've ever read on having to do with any type of of, of, of anything with hell is the Screw Tape Letters, and which uh, you know, uh, Screw Tape is you know far from the guy running around there in a pair of red long johns with a big spiky tail, mm-hmm. um, you know. And uh, so, I mean, I just like, I mean, just you know, they need to pray, re- repent of their demon praising. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wonder what he's going to, I hope he gets a, starts a church in Arizona down over by Sun Devil Stadium, you know, what is, what's he going to do there? Yeah, yeah, you know, you got like the Duke Blue Devils, there's, you know, there's a lot of, 
of actually devil teams. And, you know, I'm assuming that the, the purpose of that is that it's supposed to be something scary. You know, usually you choose something that's sort of mean or scary or nasty, and boy, what's meaner and scarier than the devil? But of course, then their mascots end up looking really kind of goofy and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, I, I think that in a sense it trivializes the devil and it, it, you, you, when you get this sort of caricature, people, they sort of get that picture in their head and, um, where, yeah, the devil's not really like that. You know, that's right. just, well, but weren't you the one who even talked about? I remember one time, in, I think in a newsletter article that you wrote for Easter, uh, Halloween, that it's kind of the time to spoof Satan. You yeah. know, the thing that Satan kind of gets mad being made fun of. You know, yeah. ooh, the big bad devil over there. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Trivialize it a little bit, but I think it makes a little bit of silliness fun of it too. Right. You know, as, yeah, as Christians, you know, we can we can make fun of the devil. We can, you know, we kind of joke about it and. um and, uh, it's not a, we can, because we don't have to be afraid of the devil and you know, we've got the, um, the assurance of the, uh, God's forgiveness and, and that he's already defeated the devil. And, um, so we can be thankful that, but yeah, we, I mean, we don't want to trivialize it. Oh, here, here's the effect that I was going for. So, <laughs> Dale has a new boy, so you know. <laughs> See, I think maybe, I think maybe he should start his own team, and he because it's, it's the Kingdom Builders Church, he could call it the Kingdom Builders Buffies, after <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I just think that'd be great, you know. And uh, oh man, I, I don't even know where to begin there. I, I don't know. You know what he should do? He should just go start burning their stuff. There you go. Yeah. See? I'm telling you. <laughs> telling you, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, here's one of the goofy churches in Florida. Um, and um, where is this church located? Um, Gainesville. Gainesville, Florida. And it's the Dove World Outreach Center. And the um, Associated Press reports that the uh, pastor of the church um, is um, getting his church together. And on September 11th, they're going to burn copies of the Quran. Oh, good grief. Which means you have to buy copies of the Quran first and thereby giving money to Muslim publishers. That was, that's always the, you know, I, that always cracked me up about book burnings. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're going to buy copies of the book in English or Arabic. Because in English, it's not really considered the Quran. Yeah. The Quran is not really Quran unless it's in Arabic. But. Okay. Hi. Anyway, so um, they said that the uh, uh, um, Al Azhar University, the largest un Muslim university in the world, um, their Supreme Council accused this church of stirring up hatred and discrimination, and says that all other American churches should condemn the event. Um, and uh, it says that the Anti Defamation League is dismayed by it. Um, the local Mennonite pastor is uh, pastor of the local Mennonite church is against it. Director of University of Florida's Jewish Student Center is against it. The mayor of Gainesville is against it. Um, yeah, pretty much everybody. Yeah. Okay, and you know what? I'm against it. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. The only thing I can think of is that he maybe he's, he's picking up from uh, the Book of Acts where the um, Christians burn the uh, books of magic and stuff. But those are their own books of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're burning their own Qurans. I'm assuming they're not stealing them. But, but yeah, I mean, the whole point is that I'm no longer going to be a part of this. You know, this right. is the past that I'm getting rid of. Um, whereas in this case, I yeah, I just I don't understand the sort of book burning going out and buying books and then burning them <laughs> like, what? i don't understand what's he trying to accomplish by this i mean is he trying to say 
Islam is bad. Well, okay, yeah, I agree that Islam is non-Christian and it is a false religion. I have no problem saying that. You know, um, if I believed it was a true religion, I'd be Muslim. You know, so uh, I don't have a problem with saying it's a false religion. Uh, good and good and true. Um, but you know, I also I, I assume he also believes that of Judaism. Is he going to go out and burn a copy of the Talmud next week? <laughs> There's the Old oh, Testament. Yeah. Whoa, man, he'd be really considered uh, anti-Semitic if he did that. Um, I mean, I mean, I just don't understand what he's trying to do. I mean, you know, our our job is to share the gospel. I don't see how you're going to share the gospel when you're doing something that they would consider so inflammatory. Right. You know, we were, um, literally, um, but we were talking, uh, tonight we were, we're studying first John and we were talking about, um, uh, being in the light and, um, and, and loving and not being a stumbling block. And we were talking about how these sort of actions, um, uh, this kind of thing and the Westboro Baptist church protests and stuff like that, that that stuff is a stumbling block to people because they see that and they say, well, that's what Christians are about. And I don't want to be a part of that. And so therefore I'm not a Christian. You know, right. it's, it's kind of like the Anne Rice thing that we talked about last week. Or, uh, I think it was Bertrand Russell who once said, I'd be a Christian today, except that I've met too many Christians. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, this is, I mean, this is just so negative. Oh, that's not right. No. And I just don't understand it. I just, you know, I mean, I just don't understand it. Um, you know, you know, it just, not only is it shutting, it got to be shutting down the, the ears of the Muslim community, but it's shutting the ears of a lot of the non-Christian people. You know, is there, once again, like you said, they're looking and going, if that's what Christians are all about, I don't want to do anything, I don't want anything with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you want to. All right. So, so here's my idea instead, just off the top of my head, um, as we were talking about it. All right. So you get a, you get a whole bunch of pictures of sort of prominent Muslims. You can't have a picture of Muhammad, you know, cause that's not allowed. But, um, but yeah, you know, prominent Muslims, uh, imams and, and things like that. Um, and then, and you, you kind of put those pictures together, um, in a, like a collage and then you put a crucifix over it. Um, and the message, Jesus died for all of these people. Right. Then you might gain the dialogue. Of course, they said Jesus never died. So, you know, it might gain you some, some, some good uh, description there. But, you know, um, just to encourage but, people to, you know, look at these, stop looking at these people as the enemy and look at these people as people that Jesus died for, that need his love absolutely. and need to know his truth. That's exactly what they are. And um, speaking of whom, which... Who really died for them? Um, we're burning through these stories. They're all short tonight. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is, this is the non goofy pastor. Uh, but we'll come back to the goofy pastors. No, never fear. Um, but, uh, this, this is related so closely because apparently there is a, I, I don't know what this NBN television is, but there is, uh, it's a, a, a um, Lebanese television network. And um, there it is. And they're producing a TV show called The Christ TV series, which apparently is being, um, uh, um, which uh, defects the full honor and glorification, his life, picture, role, pain, and sacrifices. Uh, however, it's based on the gospel of Barnabas, which has uh, not never been considered Christian. <laughs> Well, the thing is, this really isn't intended to be Christian. All right. The point of this program is not this is what Christians believe, but rather this is what Muslims believe about Jesus, or, or as they call him, uh, Isa bin Miriam, um, or Miriam, and, um, you know, Jesus, son of Mary. Okay. I mean, because the thing is, and there, you know, there's some value to that. I don't know why they do it based on the Gospel of Barnabas, but um, because I mean, it's never really considered historical either, um, unless it has some value to them. But uh, 
you know, the, the point is that they see Jesus as a prophet. They see Jesus as the greatest prophet. Muhammad's just the last prophet. Um, no, which, Muhammad's the greatest prophet. Okay, then what is, it, also the what is it with Jesus then? It's something similar to that. Yeah, he he's 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 second there to Muhammad. But when uh, Jesus talks in John about uh, he will send another who will lead you into full truth, the next comforter, yada yada yada, that's Muhammad he's talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, and so Muhammad is the last and greatest prophet, but Jesus is close to him. But uh, now I don't know why they would pick up the Gospel of uh, Barnabas. I've never read it, so it's the one of the Gnostic Gospels I'm not familiar with. But maybe it denies that Jesus was crucified or something, because one thing about the Quran is that Jesus is not crucified, never has been, cru- you know, never died. God would never do that to one of his prophets, uh, which, of course, Paul says that there's the, the stumbling block, the cross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Um, so yeah, they were going to show this. It's an Iranian series, and they were going to show it beginning at the month of Ramadan. And the pastor of the Marianite Catholic Church in Byblos, um, Bishop Bashar uh, Rai, has yep. said the film series is based on the Gospel of Barnabas, gospel not recognized at all by our church. He said that all the events in the television series contain distortion of the Christian ideology. The series undermines the foundations of every religion and creates strife. And um, so they're cutting the show because they're, um, they they did say we, we made sure it was produced in accordance with the Quran. Um, and... Uh, but because basically, I mean, it sounds like because of the Catholics complaining, um, they're cutting the show. Right. Well, this is the director, and he says, uh, you know, it's done in accordance with the Quran, and we weren't told any reason to convince us to stop the film, and he was surprised, um, you know, uh, 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 by the, the, the position of the Catholic Information Center in Rai. Um, I don't know how you could you know, be surprised. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, the, uh, if we had, I said, if we made a, a version of, uh, uh, the life of Muhammad that didn't fit in with theirs, they would exactly be happy either. They wouldn't like it anyway, because uh, you'd have to have a depiction of him. I mean, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so, but, um, well, maybe we could have him hiding in a van with his two little eyes there, like, uh, you know, <laughs> self parked it. <laughs> You just you just have an arrow pointing off screen, you know, Muhammad that way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, you know, I think part of the the reason for removing it is just because there's so much tension, and you know, you, you know, you think about the you know people burning Qurans or something like that in in the United States. That's pretty mellow. I mean, by comparison to what's going on in the Middle East. And when you talk about tension there where people are killing each other instead of just their books. Right. Well, I kind of like this one guy. Um, I see Zionist Jews behind this. The Jews have been feeding the West that Jesus was a Jew. And if your series don't reflect this lie, they will complain. Revise it and make Jesus a Jew and they will shut their mouth. It's that simple. I mean, I'm sitting there going, Jesus was a Jew. <laughs> That's not the Jewish story. That's scripture. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever denied that one. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I mean, yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, obviously they, you know, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, you can't read the comments on these stories. <laughs> At least you shouldn't. I mean, you know, I just like, like, you know, I mean, the comments, I read comments every once in a while just because it just shows people's wonderful ignorance and, you know, and just how, you know, rude people can be. I mean, just like, yeah, you know, like, come on, just, just, just listen to each other. Chill out a little bit. But anyway, I just think this is one of the dumb, the silliest things I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, personally, I'm a person who believes Christianity has withstood a whole lot of things. And, you know, do you you want to see the, the Muslim view of what Jesus did and was, then go ahead. Um, I'd be kind of interested although, in it. 
I think it would be fascinating. Apparently he wasn't a Jew, uh, but that's okay. I mean, how many blonde Jesuses have there been out there? So, you know. You know, I, I do have to say that um, that I liked this picture. Um, if, if that's supposed to be a d- Jesus, it looks more like what he probably looked like than, you know, than most of the pictures that we have. <laughs> you know, he, he actually does look Middle Eastern in there, at least. <laughs> most and of the- sure. Most of the Jesus pictures you see, he's like European. <laughs> Although I do distinctly remember in an issue at the Wittenberg door, they had a poster for Jesus the Surfer, and he was Polynesian. <laughs> With a surfboard. Cool. So, yeah, that, that, that was, yeah. So I, I kind of like that one. Um, I God only knows about stuff. Okay, more weird pastors here. Back to Florida, Broward County, uh, uh, um, yeah, outside uh, Miami. We have Peace Pastor T.J. McCormick of the Coastal Community Church in Coconut Creek. Boy, does that guy like alliteration or what? Uh, <laughs> and he stayed, spent 56 hours uh, in a cherry picker, hoisted in the air, to raise money for a 1,000 backpacks for charity to be given to um, needy children in Collier City. Boy, Coastal Community Church in Coconut <laughs> raising stuff for Collier City. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, talk about alliteration. Well, I see. Yeah. Definitely. But, uh, I, but it's not icy, it's like the five C's. Yeah. <laughs> seven C's. <laughs> the seven C's of backpacks. <laughs> All right. Um, if you know anything about a lot of, of evangelical preaching, they often will come up with these alliterative things, you know, the three P's of praying or something like that. So now we have the five, the seven C's of backpacks. <laughs> so, um, he, yeah, he was up in this cherry picker, and um, and he it says he was able to come down about 11 p.m. Thursday when an anonymous donor gave a hundred thousand dollar contribution. I think that I would do a thousand backpacks easily enough. I would think so. So, so. you know, I think he could probably hit his go. Okay, so now we now we have oh, there's another C then. The Coastal Community Church Coconut Creek Collier City Cherry Picker. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I, "See, I think this is really cool that he did this." So he says, "In retrospect, doing this in the summer wasn't the smartest idea, <laughs> but I would do it all over again. The few days of discomfort I endured pales in comparison to some of the things these kids experience." That's right, TJ. I tell you what, why don't you come on up to Massachusetts? You can do it in the dead of winter. See if that does. Let's see if that for <laughs> any better. <laughs> I see. I just I don't get how they do that because I have to go to the bathroom. Um. Yeah, well, they they probably you know well allow him time off for the bathroom or something you know, but other than that, I don't know. Does he have a little barbecue grill up there in the um in in his cherry picker? Or is he eating off granola bars or something? I don't know. Let's think. But, you could have uh, like a rope, so you could send stuff up to him. Brown bag. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I, it, it's a cute idea. I mean, it, okay, there you know, um, you know. A couple of years ago for our vacation Bible school, uh, we raised um, stuff. For, we had the kids bring in stuff for backpacks, uh, which in you know, one respect was a really cool idea. On the other hand, the kids are kind of like, we just got rid of out of school. We don't want to think about supplies for next year. <laughs> especially as soon as you can get them a whole lot cheaper in August. Right. Yeah. You know, especially yeah, a couple months. Although up here, some of the some of those uh, uh, because kids get out of school so late up here. I mean, you know, they get out, you know, the last week of June. Some places already starting their back to school sales. Um, so, um, um, wouldn't be unheard of up here. So I can, but I can see the, you know, the kids can, you know, complaining and, but so I didn't go to over too well, but, uh, I think this is a neat idea. I mean, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, what this does is seriously is this does do, um, exactly what this, this is done. Uh, give, a church publicity and presence in the community. 
Mm-hmm. It builds awareness that your church is there. Yeah. And that your church cares about the community and is willing to, you know, to do things to help out the community. It's not just, you know, that's, that's something that, um, um, that I think about a lot is what is your church known for? When, you know, if you go around the community and ask people, what do you know about this church? Right. You know, like when I was on Vicarage in Green Bay, all right, that church was known for its vacation Bible school. They had people would come from all over the place to go to their vacation Bible school because it was so well run. It was just, it was polished. It was huge. It was just, I mean, and it wasn't gimmicky. They just really knew what they were doing. And uh, the pastor did a great job with the openings and closings and he'd get the kids fired up and they'd sing and they'd, you know, and it was, it was really just a regular vacation Bible school. They just did it really, really well. And, uh, you know, they didn't have bounce houses or anything like that, but, um, um, and my first church was really known. My last church was really known for its tag sale. Yeah, yeah, because because we had a great tag sale. I told them they should change the name to the Lutheran Church of the Holy Tag Sale. They probably get more people knowing where they were located that way because that's yeah. what they were known for. You know, and um, the uh, well, the the church that I was at um, in, in Iowa was probably best known for well, for one, it was the only church in town, but. Um, I think the thing that it was best known for was the various meals that it served um, at different times. And, you know, these were fundraiser kind of meals, but especially when we had the, and you've heard me talk about it on the show, our longtime listeners, about the, the racing meals that we had when we had the the race, the go-kart championships in town and that, and we'd serve meals to for them. They, they asked us uh, to make that available just because there were no restaurants in town. Um, and uh, so if you didn't want to eat at the snack bar at the track, and wanted something a little more uh, sort of home cooking kind of stuff, uh, you know, we would provide that for them. And um, so, you know, we'd do some stuff like that. And I think we were best known for that. Um, here at, at Shepherd of the Ridge, we're best known for our preschool. That was something that when we were out uh, canvassing this week, uh, this weekend, you know, you mentioned Se- Shepherd of the Ridge and, oh, my kid went to preschool there. And like one of them was like, my kid went to preschool there 16 years ago. <laughs> And, you know, people are like, oh, um, my neighbor's kid goes there and, you know, and, and stuff like that. We're really known for our preschool, I think. And, and I would say, really, I think something the churches should strive for is to be known for something that you do for the community, not for something <laughs> that you take from the community. Now, you know, to some degree, some, when our church did those meals, it was a, um, because it was a small town the people of the community really appreciated it because it was a, it was a social gathering. Um, it was a chance from, from all the people of town to get together and catch up with each other and, you know, and stuff like that. And they really appreciated it. Um, you know, at the same time, it was a fundraiser and, you know, and I would say it's, it's really better if, if you can be known for something that's not a fundraiser. Right. Well, we uh, my, uh, out here, we're, we're really known for our vacation Bible school because uh, we get, you know, Mondo kids. It's very well known for our preschool. I bet I think a question to ask, I think it's a, you know, it's a hard question to ask yourself as a congregation sometimes is, you know, if your church burned down, would anybody in the community really miss it? You know, I mean, you know, if you went out of business tomorrow, would anybody in your community really miss the fact that you're not there anymore? Uh, and Why? And uh, I think that's, you know, really a very key question to ask, um, because some that ask, how connected are we in the community? Um, on the other hand, the only thing I'd see negative about this, and I, I, I guess, you know, maybe it's just me. Um, you know, I, we do a lot for the community. I mean, we do, we, we raise stuff for backpacks. We do a bunch of other things, too. Um, but I like to, I don't always like to draw attention to it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, this, I guess this is nice, uh, but, you know, I would like to do something with, you know, okay, let's, let's, let's do, you know, a bunch of backpacks, but let's just, I, I don't want to get flashy. Let's just do it. And, you know, then people know that, you know, the people who, who know we've done it, know we've done it, but, uh, the Lord knows we've done it. Some of us like to keep quiet about it. Yeah. That's just me. But, you know, that's, that's, I think that's something that every church struggles with because, on the one hand, you don't want to be sort of, hey, look at us and look how great we are because, you know, we're not. We're all just a bunch of sinners saved by grace. Um, 
But at the same time, you know, the, otherwise, like, well, those Christians, they never do anything for the community, you know? <laughs> it's like, well, uh, yeah, we do. We just don't make a big show of it, you know? <laughs> so, That's right. So it's like, you know, you want to, to some degree, you want people to see that love to say, you know, yes, this is, our our faith is real. And, you know, and it does make a difference and it changes who we are and it changes, you know, how we do things and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a trade off and, and, and I'm not sure where that line always is. The... Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, doesn't Jesus say, let your, um, do your good works, let your lights shine, that people see your good works, and praise your Father in heaven? So, right. you know, maybe there isn't such a bad thing to let our light shine sometimes in the community. Mm-hmm. So, or you can Twitter everything. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Or you can Twitter everything. Yeah, I, I thought this was really funny. Uh, this, uh, 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 this guy is uh, tweeting the, uh, 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 Old New Testament's chapter by chapter and has to consolidate the entire chapter into, of course, a tweet, 140 characters mm-hmm. um, and send it out. Now, part of which I think this is kind of fun because he's talking about how hard it is to uh, summarize an entire chapter in one sentence or just a very short sentence. When I was in college, uh, I had um, Old New Testament with um Dr. Bob Carlton down in Concordia, Missouri. And one of the things we had to do for him were summations. And we had to summarize each chapter of the Bible in, uh, um, in, in one very short sentence. Each chapter of a book or, or every chapter of the Bible? Every chapter of the Bible. Oh, wow. First, we did the first half of the Old Testament. And then Old Testament 2, you did the other half of the Old Testament. And New Testament class, he did every chapter of the New Testament. Wow. So, yeah, yeah you already been there, done that. So, yeah, so I, I read this and I thought, uh, hey, I've done that. And he, he he's taking, he's doing one chapter a day, you know. We had to do, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, one, uh, 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 um, I don't know how many chapters a day, order to get it all done or inside of one semester. Huh. So, man, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, you know he's uh, well he's on as of today, um, the Sunday when we're recording this, he's on Genesis fifteen. So um, I, I think this is a really cool. Um, it's a great exercise. It's probably it'd probably be a great exercise for anyone to do. Um, you know, might be a good as your um. <clears throat> As you're reading your Bible, to um, to just like write a summary in the margin of each chapter, uh, just as a way to um, you know to think. Make sure you, you stop. You're not just reading; you're actually thinking about what you're reading. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that's a it's a good idea. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, don't be too proud of this technological terror. Here we go. So there's a there it is on twitter.com. And uh Don't get technical with me. And and you just you, he's got uh starting down Genesis 1, God created the heavens and the earth, everything that lives, he made humankind in his image, gave him charge over the earth. See, I was a little disappointed though. Like with Genesis 3, the serpent deceived the woman, and uh, she and Adam ate from the tree. The earth became cursed. God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. And for me, Genesis 3, yeah, okay, you know, you got all that, but he skipped verse 15. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yep. Uh, And God also made a promise of a Messiah. Uh, So uh, what's how how does he summarize Genesis uh, 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 15? Genesis 15, here we go, big letters. The Lord promised Abram an heir and many descendants. Abram believed. He was told that they would be enslaved but would then return. Yeah, and see there again, he skips the, um, he, he didn't just promise him many descendants. He promised that and in um, those descendants, 
um, all nations of the earth, all people would be blessed. Well, not only that, but even more importantly, he promised the son, and that is, of course, one of the wonderful passage comes from. Um, um, Citizens of the world, you are under my control. So, say it again because you froze up. It looked like you were just thinking for a long time. Oh, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. He did it again. That's weird. Okay, Every time cool. you try to say it, you freeze up. Wow. It's like the devil doesn't want you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back again, try one more time. Uh, this passage that says it was credit, uh, Abraham believed it was credited to him as righteousness. Okay. Uh, so it really is a very important passage there in Genesis 15. It's got to be remembered. Mm -hmm. Are you incapable of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable know-it-all? So, but, the, you know, this is a great exercise for him, and, and it's a good, uh, you know, I, I love the idea of putting, out, putting it out there on Gail's Twitter. Gone. Now what? you lost me. Oh, you're frozen. Uh, sorry I'm about this, frozen. everybody. You're frozen. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, out. Am I moving again? Oh, you move real fast. Yeah, I think we're I think we're caught up now. As long as you can okay, see me. Cool. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I, I think it's a great exercise, um, and I, and I think it's great to put it out there on Twitter too, just as a um, just for everybody else, you know, chapter in review, um, and uh, you 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 could use it as a schedule, read a chapter a day, and um. You know, you see, there's the summary, and uh, and you can go and and read it yourself, and um, or or you know, you could you could read it, summarize it, and then compare it, and and see how, you know, what you find, or you know, I mean, there's there's lots of different ways to do it. Just be in the word because it's so great. Um, you know, it's the Bible's God's love letter to you. This is true love. This happens every day. Uh, do you want to do our viewer mail from Torkelson here? Yeah, all right. So we had a couple times ago, we said something about um, about Muslim evangelism. We got a note, and then neither one of us had a chance to check up on it, and, and we weren't quite sure what was going on. All right, so here's the deal. Um, our On YouTube, our, our friend Torkelson um, posted, and he asked about uh, um, churches of, of different beliefs doing... Uh, said we said something about churches of different beliefs doing um, Muslim evangelism together. All right, and and so I had to go look this up because I couldn't remember what he was talking about, and so I looked it up, and and that was the um, it was the uh, um, um, the convention episode, All right? So um, <clears throat> and first of all, I have to say thank you for pointing out what you know, like the the minutes. Uh, of the episode, so I could go right to it and um, and look it up without having to watch the whole episode to try and figure out where that was. So first of all, thank you, thank you for that, um, <clears throat> which also really makes leaves us without excuse for not you know checking on this earlier. But um, so it was what we were actually talking about there was not like say Lutherans with non-Lutherans, but we're what Jim was talking about an example where there was a a, a very rigid church. That um, you know that is we talked about sort of rigid churches and flexible churches. These are both Missouri Synod churches, but one was a rigid church and one was a flexible church. So you know, one would, or what some people call conservative and liberal, which doesn't really apply in Lutheran circles, or at least in Missouri Synod circles, because um, everyone's pretty conservative. But um, but yeah, so it was it was two different Missouri Synod churches. That were just very different from each other, but they were both still Missouri Synod. And um, oh, that's right. Now, yes, yes, but they are joining together in doing a reach out outreach to Muslims. That's right. Yes. Now I remember exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Right. Now I remember the situation. And they were they turning are, Qurans. Yeah. No. no, they're doing it much more positively. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and that's you know that's a great example of of churches working together, um, 
you know, to do great things and, and recognizing that what we have in common is greater than, uh, what separates us, which really not even separated, we're just different. And which is great because different people are looking for different things. I mean, here in, in North Ridgeville, there's two, um, there's two Missouri Synod churches. There's ours, which is pretty traditional. We, you know, like today we had the OAFC service, which is really different from what we usually do. Uh, it was still a liturgical service, um, but it was just, we were using songs, um, for the various elements of the liturgy. And, um, most of the songs were not in the hymnal. But um, but I'm pretty sure that the OFC handbook has gone through doctrinal review, and um, certainly I I looked over all of the stuff that we were doing in it. You know, I I didn't I've never I well I've, I've got most of the songs memorized in the songbook, and it's all good Lutheran stuff. And uh, <clears throat> so the um. So, but yeah, so we're, we're very liturgical, very, you know, um, most of what we do is right out of the hymnal. Uh, every once in a while we'll do something a little different, but, um, but for the most part we're, we're hymnal people. And, uh, there's another church in town that is, uh, very contemporary. Um, I haven't been there. I've been wanting to get there. Um, but their services are Sunday morning and I'm kind of busy Sunday morning, so I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but, uh. But you know, I know the pastor real well. He's a good friend of mine, and um, and he's, you know, his his doctrine is solid Lutheran stuff, and um, and everything that all of his his teaching and preaching is sacramental, and you know, and and he's 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 as Lutheran as you get. But his church, um, they're what they're doing is they're reaching out to a target that is very different from ours. And I know you can get into the whole debate over whether is Lutheran is. Uh, Worship isn't evangelism and, and things like that, but you know the reality is that there's people that just are not going to be comfortable in um, in a church like ours, and um, but they will be comfortable in a, a church that is a little more casual, and um, and so this they sort of you know they 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 have more of the um, of the what a friend we have in Jesus, and we have more of the holy holy holy, you know, and and it's just everybody's just trying to find that balance and different people have different preferences and, um, you know, and, and, and that's a whole different debate, but, uh, you know, the great thing is, is the, the doctrine that binds us. Um, it's just reading again in the, um, article on that, in the formula of Concord, the ecclesiastical practices and, um, and it, it talks about reasons for fellowship and, and it's really, just very uh, tremendous and insightful. So That's true. Hey, everybody. It has been great to have you with us again this week. We thank you for paying some attention to us and uh, take your time to listen. And we pray that the Lord would give you all a wonderful, wonderful week in His grace as He uh, shines and smiles upon you. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless you.